Over the years, I've thought of 3D printing as a niche hobby for rocket scientists, but apparently that's no longer the case. I've got an A1 combo from Bamboo Lab here, and thank you to Bamboo Lab for sending it over. At around $550, it's not exactly in impulse buy territory, which means I have to be incredibly careful. Now, compared to other printers I've seen and my own expectations, I'm kind of blown away by just how accessible these tools are now for people who want to make their own stuff. They say plug and play are the keywords here, with a close to zero learning curve, and setting it up was pretty simple. In fact, surprisingly simple for just how complex this new tech apparently is. The box to print time was, I'd say about an hour, plus some more time where I paused to move my camera around which by German railroad standards is basically teleportation. Now, this thing almost feels like it was designed to blend in next to our shelving system, very unlike the huge time machines I've always had in mind when thinking of 3D printers. It has an auto bed leveling system and out of the box auto calibration, both of which I don't really understand. But I think it means that I don't need to do some sacred wind waker ritual every time I want to print something which is pretty cool. It also comes with a camera, so I can now make those super extra cool time lapses that keep popping up when I'm browsing social media. The first thing I printed was this boat, which apparently many people do just to check if everything is alright, and since the boat looks like a boat to me, I decided that everything is working just fine. I then printed a toilet, because apparently my printer needs one and also this practical little scraper, both of which I found on a massively huge online community supported ecosystem library, or just Merxel as I call it. And with that done, it was finally time for my GameCube lamp. Now, I figured the first version I'd make could be a purely 3D printed one, so I could get a feel for how this thing works and definitely didn't spend several hours tweaking the design of camera before I exported the model into Bamboo Labs software in order to slice it up into layers like a digital salami. I used a white PLA filament for the game and a translucent PETG filament for this hube. But you can also get eco-friendly filaments to print with, which are made from recycled materials. And I think it might even be possible to create your own filaments from plastic trash you have lying around. But for now, I'm considering that expert mode, though I might look into that down the line. To my great surprise, it seemed like all the parts came out pretty nicely. So all I had to do was fit them together, pretend like the knob and electrical parts I'm adding inside were not from a different lamp I had lying around, since I'm above that sort of behavior, and voila! the first version of the GameCube lamp. I'll save the savory glamour shots for later, as we have a few more experiments to do here, but apart from the white game of the cube being slightly thinner than I hoped for, I'm ready to call this a win. Now for the next lamp, I'm looking to think a bit outside the box. Or maybe I should say inside the box, since this time I want to create a mold of the negative space of the lamp, so I can cast the game part in concrete. At this point, I was starting to feel sporty, but I'm happy I didn't feel ludicrous, because the ramped up speed ended up creating way more work for me down the line. With all the parts printed, it was finally time for, yes, you guessed it, a round of baby oil. There's probably a super scientific reason for why the baby oil will help make it easier to remove the mold from the concrete later, but I'm gonna pretend like I didn't read it to avoid having to pronounce all the difficult words. And with the box fully assembled, allow me to introduce the best idea I've had in 2025. Really nice. It's even more satisfying than it looks. Now all that's left to do is a bit of mummifying here and oh, I almost forgot these 
improvised and rather questionable supporting elements that may or may not serve a function in the end. And we're ready to take this con box to Crete. Yasas and welcome! Today's menu will be prepared using an abandoned Halloween bucket for children, a double layer of latex and garden gloves, and a varied selection of peripherals that were located on this windowsill before I took them. It's amazing what you can find on the street here in Germany sometimes, but it's also important to show some restraint. Now for the concrete mixture, I'm using a blue iron oxide powder and just enough red to make sure I don't manage to get the iconic purple color I originally intended. And after mixing it up with what might be a bit too much water, I poured it into the mold in a tidy and a non-spillingly fashion. I then proceeded to shake it like it owed me money and weighed it. After the longest five days of my life, I went down to the basement where my creation should be dry. And I was pretty excited to find it untouched in the corner of the dungeons. So, like a surgeon, let's first remove the cast from this lamp. Let's first remove the cast from this lamp. We'll start by... So, I guess the bad news here is that some of the concrete broke off when I removed the cast, which probably means my reinforcements didn't work as well as I hoped. Either that, or the concrete wasn't mixed properly. Or maybe let me know in the comments if you know the answer, because the good news is that the extra robust mold I printed survived, which means I can use it again and try to improve this lamp in the future. And I gotta say, I also kinda like the vibe of this little dungeon lamp with the non-purple color and the dungeon-like aesthetics. So I'm ready to move on to the lamp with a super extra hidden feature. For my final GameCube lamp, I want it to feel like it's made out of a million cubes. So I start by making a million cubes. Now, I'm intending for all my little buddies here to light up on a clean 3D printed glass box in the end. But first, we need to take them to the kitchen for a proper wash. Just kidding. These guys actually also owe me money. And after making sure they never take my lunch again, it's time for another cube. This one is gonna be clean and almost transparent. So I played around with a few different settings on the 3D printer and ended up with what's called a concentric infill. This will allow the sides of the box to avoid having visible lines, and I think it turned out pretty clean. I like the idea of the inner box just acting like an abstract light source, so that my tiny little 3D thugs can shine in all their glory. Next, it's gluing time. And to everyone's surprise, it turns out a million little cubes is actually quite a lot. Fortunately, I had a lamp nearby that could help me motivate it along the way, by allowing me to see what it could look like when it's finished. And after what felt like a year-long test of patience, it was finally time for the hidden feature. Now I'm thinking that one of these cubes could be the hidden switch mechanism, but the idea came to me pretty late, so I ended up drilling a hole in the top corner that could hide the switch. And we're once again subtly gonna skip over the whole electrical part of this lamp, so I won't even mention it. And with that, the lamp is finished. This lamp project was a blast, so I'd like to thank Bamboo Lab again for sponsoring this video and giving me access to a new tool I've always wanted to try. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other ones, and especially this one, where Hanna and Oliver shows you how to renovate an old wooden apartment in historic Norway. I should also mention that Oliver, who is actually my brother, has developed an app that helps people suffering from night terrors by sending haptic impulses through your iWatch. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching, let me know in the comments which lamp you like the most, and I'll see you in the next one.